Hello. You're welcome to another package of news from the power sector produced by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. This is Power Wheel and I am Omelogo Nadi. There were quite some important events in the power industry over the past couple of days and these we will bring you in a moment in our Power News segment. The federal government has met with major electricity customers, Discos, Jenkos and the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, to see how the currently stranded 2,000 megawatts of electricity could be delivered to industries and households. Details of that are up next. The Honorable Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, SAN, at the first stakeholders workshop on off-taking of 2,000 megawatts unutilized power for eligible customers held in Abuja, recently said the story of the manufacturing and production sector has been characterized by lack of infrastructure, especially for power, and that rather than seeking solutions, people have dwelt more on the problem. This government has committed to playing its role as an enabler to make those problems uh, go away. Now, the lack of infrastructure is oftentimes defined partly, not wholly, <clears throat> by supply of power. And uh, in my very respectful view, I think we have talked too much about the problem. So the purpose of this meeting is to convene all of those affected. Let us sit down and let us start to act to solve the problem. The minister said generation companies, Genco's, now produce 7,000 megawatts and that the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, is able to transport all of it while still expanding its capacity. The distribution companies, Disco's, have also increased their load-taking capacity to 5,000 megawatts. Today, we are producing more power than we are distributing. Our transmission capacity has also increased. The last simulation that was done in December was 7,124 megawatts. So we can transport what we are producing. So there's about 2,000 megawatts out there that can be produced. And there are manufacturers who are saying, we want energy. If we have energy, we'll be competitive. Fashola said that there was more power coming to add to the already unused 2,000 megawatts, which calls for more ways of getting them out to electricity consumers. Those of you who listened to President Buhari's speech on the 1st of January, there was a very, very clear and unequivocal commitment to infrastructure, including power. And he told you, and me, and all of us, that there was more power coming this year. He spoke about the Azura power plant, which is now in test production. He spoke, and that's 459 megawatts of power coming, for sure. He spoke about the Afan power plant, 240 megawatts of power, which is also in the final stages of installation. He spoke about Kaduna, Katsina, Gurara, Kashimbila, and Zungeru power plants, which are in various stages of development. So more inventory is coming. Do we want to keep it in the warehouse? So we need to use it. That's why this meeting is important. Fasola said the eligible rule launched by the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, in November 2017, gives customers the opportunity to buy this stranded power directly from Genco's, just like the Disco and the Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC. NEC, the umpire, has made regulations because all I can do is declare. What we gather to do today is to now operate the mechanics of that regulation and hopefully begin to see agreement between Jenkos and consumers and ensuring that discos sign on to this because we must protect their business. It must be a win-win 
as much as possible for everybody. The permanent secretary in the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, Power, Louis Edozier, urged customers to commence transactions with Genco's and TCN to take the power as Mainstream Energy Solutions Limited. Operators of Kenji and Jeba Hydro Genco's have six transactions on the table already. They've approached TCN to use TCN's infrastructure to deliver the power to a trading point close to that buyer. Yes, and in some cases, the buyer is already on TCN's network. So those projects, I think, are ready to go. The managing director of TCN, Mr. Usman Guru Mohammed, in his address said innovation is key in the power sector as it drives development, noting that generation can only grow and the transmission can only expand when they are provided with incentives. There is no way we can stay the way we are and think that we are happy. That is the reality. Everybody who say generation of 5,000 is too small for Nigeria. How do you grow generation? You grow generation by providing incentive for generator to generate and provide incentive for TCM to expand, provide incentive for distribution to expand. How do you expand? The only way you can expand is for you to have the necessary liquidity for that expansion to take place. How do you get the liquidity? You get the liquidity through the fact that you create that kind of balance. Presentations were made by NERC on the eligible customer regulation and the general manager operations of TCN, engineer Edmund Eje, spoke about the trading points on the national grid. Years after an electric power surge ripped through the serene village of Farakoi along Kaduna Zaria Expressway, killing 13 and injuring 53 people, building under high tension lines is still a major source of concern for the transmission company of Nigeria. TCN has observed with dismay that many settlements in Kaduna State have houses and schools built under overhead high tension wires. The Assistant General Manager, Transmission in Kaduna, sub-region of TCN, Hassan Baba Abubakar, explained the implications of building under these high-tension wires. In view of the threat the situation poses to human lives, the Kaduna State Government in July 2016 directed the Kaduna State Urban Planning and Development Agency, Kasubda, to issue eviction notices to those who had built structures under 30 meter radius from high tension wires in Barakan Lahu community in Igabi local government area. The general manager of Kasubda, Fausat Ibikule, said the issue of building under high tension did not start recently. She said her agency had given notices to those communities several times and had gone with TCN for a stakeholders meeting in those places. Fausat also noted that community members often turn violent at Kasubda when it goes to mark structures along the high tension lines. There is cherry news for residents of Karu in Abuja as the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, delivers a brand new 60 MVA transformer to the area. The transformer, which is to replace a faulty one at the 132 by 33 kV transmission substation in Karu, is currently being installed. Details of that news, which holds a promise for better power supply in the area, is up next. The Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of TCN, Usman Guru Mohammed, was at the substation recently to assess the ongoing installation of the transformer that replaces the second faulty 60 MVA power transformer in the substation. The station supervisor, engineer Naftali Ilya Kundepomi, who explained the reason for the recent lapse in power supply around Karu, said one of the two by 60 MVA transformers recently developed a fault leaving the station operating with 160 MVA transformer. We have uh, two transformers here, 60 MVA by two. Uh, one of them developed a problem. 
to ensure sustained supply to the distribution load centers in short time. He said TCN began alternating supply to the four feeders so that no area is completely out of supply. Since one is in, we have to rotate the supply to the town so that everybody will have an equal share. So we hope by the time this will be in, very soon, not long, this month, by God's grace, everything will be okay. TCN procured the new transformer that was brought in from Onair Port in Port Harcourt as a replacement for the faulty one. Engineer Naftali said on completion of the installation, the substation will have its full capacity restored to start supplying up to 96 megawatts of electricity. The managing director also inspected a transmission tower by the substation that is being threatened by erosion. The first-hand assessment was to enable the company devise strategies of saving the tower. The substation was first energized in September 2011, while the actual commissioning was performed on October 21, 2013. It was built to relieve the heavy bulk electricity transmission from Apo 132 KV transmission line to feed Karu and its environs. By the time this one is in place, there will be constant light, there will be constant supply within the environment, which is Karu, Nyanya, Maraba, Kuchikao, and the, the environs. There's going to be full supply, there won't be any interruption. But more promising news is also coming from Kebi State, where the managing director of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, Mr. Usman Guru Muhammad, has assured of fast tracking the completion of the Yori substation project while installing an additional transformer in the town, and these to improve the quantum of electricity supply to the state and its environs. Mohammed gave the assurance when a three-man team from Yauri local government area of Kebi State, comprising Senator Bala Ibn Naalla, architect Bala Kangiwa and Alhaji Haliru Umar, the Yan Yousu of Yauri, paid him a visit at the TCN corporate headquarters in Abuja recently. Just to tell you how serious we are, I ordered the regional general manager of Yauri okay. and tell me what is the status of the project. Okay. Because uh, we are thinking of whether we can take over the project and complete it. It's better. And it's better. So, fact, what so I want him to tell us what, what he has seen and what has happened. Senator Nala solicited the intervention of Mr. Mohammed on power infrastructure and the completion of the Yauri substation to make electricity more accessible to the people of Yauri. Please, let it be that it is during my time that these people are able to have a side of living and be liberated from poverty and solicit for your assistance. And I'm happy that in your last question to the engineer, you said he should not only tell you what is on ground, but whether he possesses the capacity to do it and then how long it will take him. That how long is the most important aspect to me. Architect Kangiwa, on his part, commended the MD CEO of TCN for his concern and proactive approaches to project execution. The last time I was here, the MD showed serious concern. Uh, I came with a message from the governor at that time that the state government was ready to give money to the contractor, but after we get the consent of the TCN, so that if the funding was the problem, we would want to come in and assist. We know how difficult it is uh, to get funding. But the MD advised us that the money was not the problem then. In my presence, like I said, he asked the contractor, didn't we pay you last week? He said, yes, you did, sir. Why are you not on site? He promised that they were going to be on site by the following weekend. Responding, the MD and CEO noted that such uncompleted projects like the Yauri substation were part of the many contracts that were awarded to contractors who had little or no capacity or expertise to execute them. Most of the people, people who are doing this installation don't have capacity. In fact, my investigation, why I started empowering our TCN engineers is that about 80 to 90 percent of these people, they'll take the contract and call TCN engineers to be working on Saturday and Sunday for them. 
he assured that TCN had already sent one of the project engineers to assess the level of project's execution so that TCN decide whether to continue or cancel the contract. One of the good things that we have now is that we have our engineers, they can take and complete Natalia, one. Natalia, we I have completed, more. look, we have completed, make them comfortable. Sir, we have completed more transformers between now, from the time we came in February to now. Mohammed said TCN is doing a lot under its transmission, rehabilitation and expansion projects across Kebi and Sokoto states, including the installation of a new transformer in Yauri to improve electricity supply. We are again adding another transformer in Yauri. If these contractors will fail, yeah. that, the second yeah. one will succeed. So, will will succeed. Yeah. Yeah, so in addition to this one, we have yeah. added another yeah. transformer yeah. in Yawuri, 60 right. MVA in Yawuri. Right. We'll bring you more reports on the program in the Power Flash segment. You're still watching Power Wheel, a production of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN. It's time for a short break. Don't go away. In the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, we transmit bulk electricity from power generating companies, GENCOs, to distribution load centers of various distribution companies, DISCOs. Nationwide, we do not generate electricity, neither do we distribute same directly to electricity consumers. TCN has two business units, the Transmission Service Provider, TSP, and Independent System Operations, ISO. The ISO comprises of System Operation, SO, and Market Operation, MO. The business units all perform specialized functions under the TCN umbrella. Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, Will in power for national economic growth. This message is brought to you by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. We sat down in the ministry and we decided to drive the rural electrification plan using three anchors. The first anchor was to overview all of the uncompleted rural electrification plans. And there were almost 2,000 of them that we made. That we will revitalize them, conclude them, and use them as one anchor. The second anchor was the abandoned hydro dams. There were many of them around the country. We counted up to 54 and they were in rural, agrarian, and farming communities. And that if we could revive this slowly, we will increase penetration of rural electrification because the electricity will be close to the rural communities instead of transmitting them over long distances where the power that is supplied is usually very inefficient. The third anchor was to use universities. Almost every university in this country, without exception, started life in a rural community. Cities have grown to meet others, but some of them still have large communities, rural communities around them. And we thought that if we use the federal universities as the anchors for consumption, we can then extend to the villages and communities around them. We have a Vox Pop segment, which is up next. Electric shock 
uh, we avoid it first of all <laughs> if possible you get an expert to do it for you to if there's a problem okay just pre to take precautionary measures you don't you don't have to relate anything that has to do with say, electricity with water that's number one secondly whenever you're not making use of your electrical appliances you need to switch them off or whenever you're leaving the house that's one of the ways that you can avoid electrocution and make sure that your house, house is well aired. Uh, well, you don't have to have um, naked wires around your house. Then you don't operate electricity with wet hands or with your bare foot. We don't expose the cable. That's the most important. We don't. We, there are some we put under the rock, and the one that we normally use, we are it has to be protected. That we avoid overloading of electric circuits and extension cords. Our sockets at homes or in the offices should not be overloaded with some appliances. They should also avoid stepping on electric wires on floor or ground. Even if you have shoes, they also avoid operating an appliance or switching on or switching off apparatus with wet hand. We do appreciate your views and comments and always look forward to receiving them. So please keep them coming. And you know you can always reach us through these various platforms and handles on your screen. But it's time to go now. And not to worry, I'll see you same time next week. Bye for now.